Rabbi Yechiel was an investor, not stam an investor. He invested in the Shomis. And I was like to be, to be one of them. And it didn't make, didn't make just the difference. It made a difference in my whole life. He was my mentor. He was my, he was my mentor, he was my Rebbe. He was my brother, he was my friend. When I say brother, not my blood brother, but the whole pair family accepted me as, as, as a brother in the mishpacha. So many of the relatives, all of them, their uncle, people in, in South Dozen Park used to, used to stop me sometimes in the street, hand me a check, give this to your, to your father to give to the shul. They held it was another son. And, and, and I felt like not, I was not a son. And Yechiel spent so much time. You can't imagine how much time he gave up just working on me, I guess you would call it. And I, I could never pay him. I could never pay him for everything he did to me. <laughs> he was this way. He always told me to work with everybody. He was very non to Rashi. Not everybody in Lakewood was non to Rabbi But he happened to be one. And that could be because Rashi was that thought was not to his father as well. When I came to Lakewood, you know, I had a Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Moshe Eisman, he said that if the Chovetz Chaim would come into you, into the, everyone would stand up. And, but after all, well, you know, he said once and twice, three times, then it becomes sort of, sort of every day. But I can tell you this, whenever I saw a Baron, Ronald Rocha, whenever I saw him, he was, I had the same I had awe, the awe I had, and they just never went away. But especially when, it was first, when I was first there, I was walking uh, along the hall once, and Rashiva's door opened up, and he comes out and stands and looks at me, and I froze. And he stood and looked at me. I was standing there frozen. And he looked at me, and I stood looking. Then finally, he closed the door, went back in. I was, uh, uh. Anyway, a few days later, maybe the next week, same thing happened. I walked down the hall, the door opens, she walks out, he stands there, and he looks at me. Same thing, same thing. So who do I go to? I went to Yichil, my mentor, my rabbi. I said, I said, this is in the 20s. He said, Chaim, he knew the Rosh Shiva. Just want to bring out that point. He said, the Rosh Shiva, he may be the Rosh Shiva, but he's there, there an Adler, and he's very, he's, he, probably, he probably wants to ask you something, but he stares like he doesn't want to, to stare. He said, you know, so the next time it happens, if it happens, ask him, does Shiva have to this? Sure enough, next week, the door opens. And my first reaction was, oh, no, not again. And then I remember what Yechiel told me. I said, oh, Shiva Dav Tepes. Oh, Rashba Chilakalov. I mean, he had a race. What Rashiva didn't want to ask that favor. His sensitivity is, was, was with, with everybody. He was, his intelligence was exceptional, as has been alluded to. He had a, a unique way of thinking of things. 
It was very unique. I'll tell you a shock of insight that I overheard just walking past someone. In my days in Lakewood, someone said about someone, I don't know, he thinks like a healed pair. So the other one says, no, he doesn't. Nobody thinks like a healed pair. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> And, and I, I appreciated that more than the first who heard it from him. He was, a, he was such an exceptional person in so many ways. But the fact is, he was a giving person. He did, he did for the Shamas. He did for, his whole life was dedicated to giving to the Shamas, other than the Shamas. We should hope. Oh, yeah.